Hey, welcome to the Master Tech Lou channel. I am Lou, and this is going to be a very quick video on if your Mercedes will not start after a crash, like a, a front end accident where airbags were deployed. Um, I believe that's what has to happen for this to occur. It's very hard finding information on the Mercedes side, but there's something called crash signal, and it's sent to the engine module to stop the engine from cranking over. So what you have to do is you got to use a scanner to reset the crash signal and it will allow the engine to crank. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so I'm using this Launch Creator Elite, all right? And I'm going to go into the engine control module. I'm going to go to special function. I'm going to go to teach in processes. And in here, we want enabling of engine start after crash event. In here, if the engine was not allowed to crank because of a crash event, it would show active in the actual value. The scanner's kind of small, so they bunch up all the words, but that's what you're looking, you're gonna see. So the specified was if crash was active, you're, it would say active, but it says not active. So this one, this one does start and run, but I had a question on another YouTube video about this review of this scanner if this can do that and i thought you know what people don't really know after crashes that you have to reset the engine module or i'm sorry you have to reset the engine module value so what i would do is i would hit continue and then it would allow it to go through the process and in fact let me see what it says here that would be it it would just show i think if it said active it would do something different but since it's not active you know it would probably show a process and say completed and then go back to the screen so that's what you got to do now, the other reason that a Mercedes won't crank that no one really knows about is an electrical value called drive authorization. What that is, is the key has a VIN, the ignition switch has a VIN, the steering lock has a VIN, the shifter has a VIN, the transmission control module has a VIN number assigned to it. If those don't match, or if there's an issue with it reading the drive authorization value, it's going to say no, and it's not going to let the car crank. So I'm going to show you with this little scanner uh, how to access the drive authorization values to see if it shows yes or no, so you know which module is affected. When a module says no, there's nothing you can do but replace it. It's not allowing it to unlock and to start. There's no test for that. So um, uh, if... if uh, if someone says they can rebuild these things for that, I'm not sure if that's a viable option. We don't do that in the dealership. We just replace the part because the fix is to replace the part. So, um, well, let me show you the drive authorization values. All right, so with the scanner hooked up, I'm gonna go to ignition lock. The ignition lock should be the one to show you values of all the drive authorization modules. And then you can go into each module itself. So we're going to go to read data stream, drive authorization system. I'm just going to select all. All right, so it likes the key. A valid key was used. All right, the ignition lock is activated, meaning it's it was programmed and everything. It's initialized. It's personalized. It means it's married to the car. It tells you what key is in there. All right, now we're looking for start enable. So if this were to say yes, that means the trans is okay. It's allowing starting. The shifter is allowing starting. The engine module is not, even though it is. And then the ignition lock is allowing it. So the, the modules we have in here are the ignition switch, the trans, the shifter, and the engine module. All right, so now let me show you. It'll say yes for the engine. I'm not sure why it flips to no, but it says yes. And it allows the car to start. All right. So we can get out of here and we can go straight to a different module. So we can go to the engine module. Data stream. I completely missed it. It is in the actual value system components drive authorization. So I go in there, just select all. Now in here,
All right, so I'm not sure why the engine module is not showing data in there. It's probably something to do with the scanner. But when you go to read data stream, and you go to drive authorization, it should show you yes or no in here, all right? I'm not sure why it doesn't. I'll have to try with my other scanner and see. But then you could also go to the shifter module Read the data stream, drive authorization, select all, and this shows yes. If this said no, then the issue is the shifter is not allowing starting. And then it tells you the VIN, so the VIN should match the car. If the VIN doesn't match the car, that's why it's not going to let you start. So you can't just swap any used part. And then even if you have someone program a different VIN in there, it can still kick out drive authorization. Cars are pretty smart. So then we can check the trans. So there's two ways to check drive authorization through the ignition switch value and then through the actual modules themselves. Read data stream, drive authorization, select all. Yes, 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 yes. So this allows starting, all right? So there you go. Those are the modules that you would see drive, drive authorization from. So if, uh, if you have an electric shifter up here, you have an ISM, and ISM is the electric shifter on the side of the trans. If you had a manual shifter here, then you would have a uh, ESM. And if you had the electric shifter here, you would still have an ISM. So those are the modules that you would see for, um, for drive authorization. I'm going to grab another scanner like my Autel and see if that engine module shows something different just for uh, verification of this. All right, so I got my Autel hooked up, and let's see. All right, look at all the different values in here. So there's definitely a difference in software between that launch scanner and the Autel. So the tricky part about that is if you only have that launch scanner and you went to read drive authorization and there's no values there, that would make me think that you have to replace the module if it wouldn't start. So that would be a misdiagnosis. So that goes to show you that uh, one scanner is not enough. You need an arsenal of scanners. Um, or what I would do is I would recommend, at least now you know that it's possible that's the issue, send it to the dealer or a shop, if you're not a shop, you know, and have um, a different scanner used. But uh, yeah, you can see it's quite a difference between the two options and then all these different that it shows. So this is what typically every I'm sorry, I hate saying typically. This is what every drive authorization module would show. Is it is it initialized? Meaning, is it um, uh, put into service with the car? Is transport protection deactivated? What that is, is when um, uh, you get a new module and put it in, it's gotta be programmed and stuff. And the only thing to do that is a scanner to remove, It'll a scanner will initialize it, it'll remove protection, it'll personalize it, meaning it's married to the car and put the VIN in there. Um, and then this will tell you if drive authorization is active or not, telling you, yeah, everything matches, it's happy. So in fact, we can um, see what the ignition switch shows now that we have a different scanner hooked up. Let's just go through all the modules again so you can see all right, so when you're in the Mercedes, let me show you something. If I'm in the drive, right, basically all these modules have to show drive authorization, yes. Um, I don't think the fuel pump module cares and I don't think the power electronics care. I think it's motor, shift, and trans, and then the ignition switch. So let's just try this, if this is even in this car. I don't know if the power electronics module is in this car. I don't think it is. I didn't do an auto scan, so it usually pulls up what what modules re returns back to you. I'm doing manual. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's in this car. Yeah, so. Oh, wait, maybe. Let's try. All right, nope. All right, so we'll go transmission control. All 
Hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. Live data. Drive authorization. go yes 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 we'll see what the uh, ES or ISM shows There's the values there. And then lastly, we can go to the EIS or the ignition lock. Uh, I believe it should be body. There you go. I don't know why it says no here, even though the car is running and allows it to start. So if I turn the key off, turn the key back on, it says yes, but whatever. If it said no, then you would go to the engine module and see if it showed yes. But uh, if we had a problem with it starting, I think it would show no here. And then in the engine module, it showed no. So I hope that helps you understand uh, two reasons why a Mercedes engine will not crank over um, if the car's cranking, then nothing is stopping it from starting. You probably have a fuel pump issue or a fuel pump relay or wiring or a bad fuel issue. But if the car is not cranking, then you're looking at a starter, starter relay, um, starter fuse, or uh, one of the modules is not showing drive authorization. So it's not allowing it to start. So those are the couple of things that uh, most people don't know about that they have to, have to use a scanner to see. So uh, my name is Lou. If this was helpful, hit subscribe, hit like, check out my other videos. I do a lot of review videos. I do some how-tos. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Hope this helped you guys. Uh, until next time, take care.